A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. My brothers and sisters, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to Christ and the Church. Each of you, however, should love his wife as himself, and a wife should respect her husband. I wonder if the passage we heard in the first reading today is still controversial among Christians of our generation. Some modern commentators explain that this passage of the Ephesians is just a product of St. Paul's time and age. Thus, we don't have to be offended even if it seems St. Paul teaches husbands should rule over their wives. His culture heavily conditioned this writing. Now let us not hang up on these words. Let them pass over. They are not relevant to our times and culture. Instead, let us develop a new theology based on equality. But this approach can seriously undermine the authority of the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It may also discredit the whole gospel because there is hardly any passage or episode not culturally conditioned or influenced. We often miss the first sentence of the passage. It reads, My brothers and sisters, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ." This is the summary and gist of what St. Paul teaches. He is not telling one sex to rule over the other. St. Paul doesn't argue that one sex is superior to the other. Here, he is not discussing the allocation of power between sexes. Too often, modern Christians fall prey to this frame of the power struggle between sexes. However, let us not forget that our religion is not about a competition of any kind for self-interest. As St. Paul writes, a husband and a wife should be subjected to each other. It's a mutual and reciprocal subjection. It is not a domination of one sex over the other. This mutual subjection finds its model in the relationship of Christ and His Church. As Christ sacrifices Himself for the Church, and as Christ and the Church are united through that sacrifice, 
a husband completely abandons himself for his wife and vice versa. Each era and each culture may have a different expression of the self-giving and mutual subjection between a husband and a wife. The passage of the Ephesians also reflects its cultural element. Nevertheless, what our Lord teaches remains the same. The self-donation and mutual subjection according to the mystery of Christ and the Church.